So there is this one really interesting thing that happens whenever you travel far away from Roblox's origin point. And it's the fact that the engine is having trouble rendering anything due to something called a floating point, which I will be explaining later. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So this right here is the origin of the world. You can see that the position is 0 by 0.5 and 0, so it's actually a little bit above it. But you can also see that it extends in six different directions because you have these z, y and x coordinates. And the thing with these coordinates is that if I for example do a playtest, and I don't know why but my toolbox isn't here anymore, but anyways, if I for example just move my character really high, you're going to be able to see what's going to happen. And yeah, that's basically what I mentioned about the rendering. Because the further the character is from the origin point, the more inaccurate the rendering and everything else is going to basically be. And also the thing that you just notice is called a null zone or a glitch zone or even a floating point. And it basically just happens because the float, which is a number that has decimal places, that's used for the world coordinates, is losing precision over big distances. I'm going to show an article later, but for now I just want to show different stages of the null zone. Okay, so I basically just have a button right here that also has a local script. And what this button is going to do is basically just teleport me to the checkpoint that's going to be taken from this table right here. And this checkpoint is going to be the 16,000 stat mark on the x-axis of the world coordinate. Then this one is going to be 65, then 131,000 and so on. Then I basically just create a part and I pivot my character above the location. And now thinking about it, I also should make a surface GUI to display the distance in coordinates on the created part. And it's basically just going to look like this. But let's just play playtest and see what happens if I go onto one of the checkpoints. So right here I am on the 16,000 stat mark. If I go to the humanoid root part of my character, you can basically see the position right here. And nothing really seems to be wrong, except if I'm going to zoom in. You can see a little bit of jittering on my character, especially on this part right here, or maybe even this edge, but the effect is pretty minor. And also my controls are working properly. So let's just teleport to another checkpoint on the 65,000 stat mark. And you can see the effect being way more noticeable. There is some artifacts happening as well as more jittering. But I am still able to walk. So let's just see the field checkpoint for now. And now you can really see the difference. Especially when you move the camera, you can see the whole character jitter. But well, we still have six more checkpoints to go. So let's see if we can actually make it. And now on a quarter of 1 million stats, I will just compare this to what migraine feels like. And also there seems to be a little bit of delay on my movement. But let's just keep going. And now this is 500,000 stats, and my character is basically becoming a mash. Nothing is basically being able to render, and you can see a lot of deformations happening on every 3D object. And even moving my camera is a little bit hard, because it just keeps stuttering. But let's just go to the 1 million mark. And right here even this text label is deforming. But yeah, you can see that my character is becoming like 8-bit and it's pretty hard to do basically anything. And I can't even turn my camera or move properly and I wouldn't even say that the cut on my shoulder is a cut anymore. I don't know if you can tell but my movement is becoming really jittery and it sometimes just acts if there was a wall placed somewhere on the y-axis. But let's move to the next checkpoint. And this one is really, yeah, it's just saying 7. But I barely can move my camera on one of the axes, as well as it's pretty impossible to basically just move. Even turning it with arrows doesn't work. And my character isn't even a character anymore, it just looks like an unwrapped square. Or even a cardboard box. But let's just teleport to the second last checkpoint. And... yeah. You basically just saw how my character was basically a flat plane and it didn't even register me being on the platform. But if I just go to the server view right now and just try to change the position of this player to the previous part and just teleport to him, well, it's not even going to exist. But you can basically see that even my camera is in this location and it's still basically just hard to operate it. But I also had an idea to basically see what happens with some of the different stuff like shaders or even the glass trick from one of my previous videos that are going to be placed in that distance. So I'm just going to create a part and just change its C-frame position. And then press on F so I can move to it. And well, it's even a little bit hard to indicate the axis on the scale tool. And some weird stuff is happening to the graphics. And well, here is the glass trick that doesn't even seem to be a sphere anymore. And there is a lot of weird stuff basically just happening to it. 
and also it's really funny how the rotate tool is now some kind of a square. And even whenever I move this, it was making a lot of weird different deformations. Like it's supposed to be a sphere and now it's basically this. But let me move this one out, because this is actually a metal PBR, and you can see the effect a little bit more clear on this one. And you can also see how it's basically making this deformation and all of the problems are happening on one of the axes and that's because of the floating point coordinates losing accuracy only on the x because the position is basically just set to the huge number on one of the axes but if I make it two then just go to the object you can see that it's going to happen on the x and the y doesn't even visible and something like this is really hard to navigate. The only place where I can move my camera is basically just up and down I'm not even able to move forward or backwards. But if I reduce the number, you can see that this shape is again becoming a sphere. I mean, it's still really hard to move, but at least we have a proper shape right now. And now the rotate tool just looks like it was taken from a horror game, but anyways. And you guys know how I made a burning server for one of my thumbnails and... Well, it just doesn't seem to resemble a server anymore. And I'm trying to move it away with the particle emitter, but you can see whenever I move the whole model, the emitter is moving inaccurately. So even though the emitter path is there, it's still creating the particles in this area in front. And if I move it close like this, the whole thing is basically just going to break. But I wanted to use this because I wanted to see if the particles are also going to deform, but they are actually not. The only thing that's changing is the jittering, so it's nice to see that at least something is working. And well, this model just became an 8-bit cut now. I don't know why, but the deformation just made it so wide. But yeah, basically most of this stuff is just, like I said, going to be broken. And well, this used to be a sword at one point. It's kind of funny seeing it behave like this whenever I just try to rotate it, since it's basically just jittering all over the place. And I just realized that if I increase the speed of my camera, I am actually just able to move properly, but I still can't rotate it. And this sword kind of looks like a fish from a distance. But well, maybe I should now explain why something like this is happening. And I found a pretty good article about it. It's from a site called Game Dev Frequently Asked Questions. Where this paragraph is saying that the floating point numbers are used to represent position, rotation and scale. As well as physics quantities and more. And relying on floats in large game worlds, so like Roblox or Minecraft, can cause position errors and inconsistencies over long distances. And that's because if you for example store a X coordinate of a game's object, which is going to be in the computer's memory, as it moves further from the origin, which means that the coordinate is going to increase, there is going to be fewer bits left to store the accurate position of the object on the set coordinate. Because like it said, the flows is precision over large spaces. And here is a good example of the precision being lost with the increasing x value. So if the x is 10, the precision is going to happen to the 5th position after the decimal place. If the x is 8000, it's only going to be 1. And if the x is 100,000, it's going to be 10, which means it's going to be really inaccurate. Saying that as we approach x with a magnitude of 100,000, we lose centimeter or millimeter precision. And for a large open world, these errors become very noticeable, causing objects and terrain to visibly jitter. And I'm not going to bore you guys with explaining what a bit is and how the float is structured. There is many videos explaining that already. But the thing that I'm going to present is how it basically just works in scripting. So if I just add a server script into the server script service and just do local x is going to be equal to 0.05 and then local y is going to be equal to 0.01 and then just try to print out the x plus y and then just do a run test, it's going to print out 0.06 and then a lot of decimal spaces and d5 at the end. And this happens because of the float, which in our case is going to be x and y, being calculated in binary. Where if I change it to 500 and then 100 and again do a run test, it's going to print out 6, which in this case is correct. Because in binary, 1 is just going to be 1 and then 5 is going to be 1, 0 and 1. Because how we convert the binary to decimal is basically counting like this is 1, then this is 2 and this is 4. If the value is 0, that means in this case it's going to be 2, then it's not going to be added to the final result. So it's only going to be 4 plus 1. And 1 is basically just 1 because 
it's basically just followed by a large number of zeros in front of it, but for context sake I'm just going to leave it like this. And now if I change this back to the previous example, the binary is going to look like this. And now the computer is basically just going to try to add these two numbers and then convert them back to the decimal, where the decimal value is going to have accuracy to only one of these midpoints. And I don't really know the exact values in this case. But if I again do a run test, this 5 right here at the end is caused by the inaccuracy of the float variable. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my UGC items and yeah, hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.